Hello my soccer universe and now the final review this time it is on the Iberian leagues mostly La Liga because again despite my best intentions and even effort uh, I could not see any highlights of Liga Portugal I could have uh, watched the whole match but I have to say there were some other matches that interested me uh, even more I hope the situation gets better better there, but I will keep La Liga Portugal in there because I think it's an important league uh, with at least two if not three, three really really big teams in there, so I will show the results, but I cannot really comment much more on these. Also La Liga, I did not get to see all too much, but from what I could see, yeah, this was an interesting round as well with uh, the big boys coming down to earth. We thought, yeah, they'll be flying, they're cruising. Nope. Nope. It just took a week and now we know they are, they really have those troubles that we suspected from the get-go, except that the champions, they keep rolling. Uh, it started out with a 1-1 between Betis and Cadiz, uh, Mallorca. Uh, Rage is in your first win, but the game that I first game where I saw a little bit was Granada Valencia. I think I switched flip flipped over after I watched uh, Inter's game. And that second half, I mean, Granada had a beautiful uh, goal to take, to take, take the lead, and then they really looked. I mean, the first uh, half uh, seemingly was very entertaining, uh, chances on both sides. Granada slightly the better team. Second uh, half, not much from Valencia. Granada actually much closer to the second goal, probably would have deserved the win. However, Valencia gets a ridiculous penalty. One of those that you cannot believe that this was even given as a penalty, and VAR looked at it. I mean, the, if there was a contact, it came from the striker on the defender, not the other way around. To be honest, I still have not seen a contact there. Uh, but then, you know, I saw the replays on the live uh, stream, maybe if I would have, there was contact there. But even if it was, it was the wrong way around. I heard them all multiple times and I thought at, at first, yeah, this was not really a penalty. No, it was not a penalty. Uh, however, Valencia gets a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Espanyol, one of those, uh, we have three teams that have yet to score. I mean, that is a really, really bad statistic. Uh, and as, as we'll see, um, La Liga has a very bad, very bad goal average. But I honestly think it's down to the high temp 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 temperatures at the moment, but it's not down to the big teams. And big teams, Athletic Club against Barcelona, um, was, was about to watch, but then was just too tired to, to do so. Um, Athletic Club, most of the time, was the better team. Barcelona really having trouble, and it was only uh, fair when Martinez got the goal. How, and, uh, you know, it was a game where Eric Garcia, he heard that his grandmother had, had died the day before. Uh, you could clearly... He did have a horrific game. Uh, nothing went right. I mean, he, he didn't look good on the goal. Uh, he got sent off. Not his day. However, you have to give it to Barcelona. Uh, yeah, you gave Pedri finally some break uh, to come off, which meant that an Austrian Demir Alar uh, Alla made up his debut for Barcelona, which everyone talks about here. Uh, um, please. I mean, if he becomes a star at Barcelona, great. Uh, I just don't see it. He's on loan from Rapid. That's how bad the finances from Barca of Bar Bar Barcelona. But Barca get the equalizer and uh, threw a wonderful goal by Memphis Depay. I mean, it was nicely played, but it was also very much a brilliant effort. And so Barcelona escape uh, the San Mames, one of the tougher places to play. Now with spectator that hit us, they escaped that, that, that one. And they do the Basque double with four points. So that has to be given. Speaking of Basque double, uh, Real Sociedad needed a penalty to get uh, past uh, Rayo. Not great uh, per, per performance there. Also Atletico, very labor. Typically Atletico. I mean, I think Atletico likes it. Likes, likes, they also had the trophy presentation finally in front of fans. And who scores? Angel Correa, who had already scored uh, the previous two go uh, goals of theirs. And Rodrigo de Paul assisting. And, you know, uh, it seems like this Atletico team is enough to transform that it might actually carry on to something better. Um, we'll talk about the Georgia uh, in a review. And then uh, the game of the weekend, Levante against Real Madrid. And a little bit of regret not watching, but there were other games. There were two other games that I was watching where quite some stuff was happening. But these were sure should have taken the case. Uh, it started out very 
as you will, will, will expect, Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale scoring for Real Madrid 1-0 in the fifth minute already and Real Madrid relatively cruising, uh, maybe even missing to make a second goal in, 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 in a way, although again you did not see much from uh, especially El Nazar uh, and Isco also, I mean looking sharper but also not quite right yet. However, it all broke, all hell broke loose in the second uh, half where Levante immediately off the kickoff scores to Roger Marti, then uh, Jose Campagna puts Levante in, in, into lead in the 57th uh, and you think wow there's a there is probably a big um, change at foot uh, and then right after that that, that goal um, Vinicius Jr. Come, comes on and he scores the equalizer um, after assisted by uh, Casemiro however uh, Robert Pierre puts Levante back by Vinicius Vinicius Jr. with one of those did he mean it? Did he not mean it? Tata touches. I mean, it seems like he wanted to make a low cross in, but the way it hits the post and the way he looks at it, maybe he really meant me to do it. A, a brilliant goal. In many ways, a brilliant goal. Maybe uh, in doubt, go for <laughs> go for the um, um, score of the goal and not against it. A brilliant piece of footwork uh, to score that one. And then Aitor Fernandes gets sent off and all. The people were uh, all uh, substitution were done, and so we had all uh, that the, the outfield player had, had had to go in the game, in into goal. This game had it all. I regret not watching it, but it was uh, from just the highlights were already so much fun uh, to watch. And, and, and I think it was, it was the last goal where um, the assist for Robert Pierre came from Alaba, who couldn't see him. I mean, it was complete chaos back there. And yeah, Real Madrid is also a whole lot of work like Barcelona. Didn't see anything. Sevilla beat Getafe uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday, and then another nil-nil between uh, Celta Vigo and at Osasuna, which means if you look at the table, we have look at position 13, three teams not having scored yet. That's pretty bad. And one of those is Villarreal, Osasuna, the Espanol, uh, the other ones, and of course they all played somehow with each other. Um, on top, you know, it doesn't say it's the same much, but Sevilla at the moment, the top, and Atletico, those are the only two teams that have a perfect start so far. 1.9 goals on average, really, really not, not good. Rayo having had two away, away games are not all the easiest one also to start the league. So yeah, uh, it's actually quite curious. There were quite a few, few teams that have not had a home game yet. So um, don't know what the scheduling is. It Probably has to do with the climate. Also, you know, the Bernabeu is not ready yet. Uh, so I think there are quite some things happening there uh, to that regard. Um, in the expected standings, we have now Real Madrid started the season as the top favorite. Top favorite. I mean, uh, it was always a tight, tight race, but Real Madrid was in first. Now they're in third with Atletico going over, but it's still super, super, super tight. You see barely anything. Um, delineating those three i mean uh on average 80, 81 80 and 80 and if you look at the percentages you see maybe a slight chance that barcelona is a little bit more ahead of the others however uh, atletico has uh, two points more the sevilla is the dead on fourth place team although i think that sevilla i said last time i think sevilla could do some, some, some something and then there's the rest and let's see who will go out, out there and uh Towards the end, I mean, Cadiz, Elche and Rayo are probably the teams that we look at, but Alaves is also already a little bit in trouble. Um, next time around, we have no Mon Monday games. It also be played from Friday to uh, Sunday. Atletico against Villarreal seems to be the one that uh, looks most interesting, although Barcelona, Getafe and Betis, uh, Real Madrid, yeah. And given how Levante is was fun to watch, I think Real Sociedad Levante, that could be an interesting one. Now it will end in a nil-nil that I put it out there. Also two promoted teams with uh, Mallorca and S Espanol kicking off on Friday. As I said, I have not seen anything from La Liga Port 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 Portugal. I can only say that Porto dropped for the points for the first time. So we have Benfica and Sporting continuing to win. Uh, also Boavista turning it around a little bit. Um, and I don't know why I'm always looking at Tondela, who had in the first round this big away win. And since then they have lost twice and find themselves now mid-table but on top it's Sporting with three points and Benfica uh, with three wins and also Benfica with three three wins and Sturil, should have mentioned them, 
two wins and one draw uh, for a promoted team. That's a pretty strong showing. And you see, actually, they have a uh, chance of getting re uh, relegated. Uh, in La Liga Portugal, the goal average is much better than in Spain, but it's already three runs played with about a 2.6. That looks a whole lot better already. Uh, expect a standing is now Benfica, Porto, Sporting. Um, you know, things could change. I, in Portugal, I'm always amazed how after the fourth place, it is basically a crapshoot. Yes, the uh, Aruca and Vizela are probably the ones that are most touted to go down, promote the teams. Sturil with uh, having now those seven points, points really pulling themselves out of trouble. However, really, literally anything is possible there. Uh, I think, yeah, even Gimares, uh, Boavista, who are big name teams, uh, by no, no mistake, when Boavista almost got re re relegated. And we also don't have any big uh, matchups in Portugal. Maybe Family Gao, who have been good two seasons ago, but I think they are probably in danger of, danger of being going down. There is one I see, Braga against Gimares, that's a uh, derby. So that would be interesting probably to watch. And I, I really hope I can see at least highlights of this because I really would like to see more of the Liga Portugal. But hey, I'm here in Austria and Portugal is far, far away, even a different time zone. In any case, uh, let me know what you thought about the games in La Liga and La Liga Portugal. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this uh, video, subscribe to my channel to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.